Well, good evening, everyone, and uh, it's a joy to be back with you this evening and uh, looking forward to what the Lord has in store for us tonight. Again, apologies for uh, services being cancelled today. Um, a bit disappointed with the uh, with the snow, but uh, again, just thrilled we're able to meet together in this way and uh, just thankful for the Lord allowing uh, us to be able to have church together like this. Um, just as people are uh, joining, just to, to give a few uh, announcements for the week ahead. There's no mother and toddler group tomorrow because of the, the weather. Um, I know the, the snow has passed and uh, they've issued warnings tonight because of the uh, as the, the, the snow thaws and uh, the, the, the roads start to freeze. So if you are out and about tonight, just uh, take care, and especially if you're leaving <clears throat> first thing in the morning. So just uh, stay safe. So there's no mother and toddler group tomorrow. Uh, we will have choir practice on Wednesday at six o'clock because um, a week today, the choir sings in Bethel Baptist Church in Rus, the Easter cantata, The Love of Jesus. And so we will have choir practice on Wednesday at six o'clock and then we'll continue our study on the book of Daniel on Wednesday at seven. So we'll be moving into Daniel chapter three on um, on Wednesday. And uh, Thursday Bible school is known with Brother Andrew continuing to look at Second Kings. And then on Friday, we'll have all of our youth ministries, the drama. Uh, and again, you pray for them as they prepare for their presentation for Easter Sunday. So the drama will be rehearsing on Friday and then we'll have our children's ministries. And again, it was excited on Friday. We had a few announcements to make and uh, just excited to see what the Lord is doing with the youth ministries at Bethany and to see how um, our teenagers are growing and having a desire to serve the Lord. So if you would be in prayer uh, for our youth, it would be much appreciated. And then, like I said, on Sunday, the choir will be singing in Rus uh, in Bethel Baptist Church. And then a week on Wednesday, on the 28th, we'll be in Princess Street with Kevin and Anna. Um, so you pray for that. Uh, the choir singing on Wednesday the 28th down in Princess Street. And of course, then we have Good Friday. Uh, the choir will be singing at 7 o'clock at Bethany and then on Easter Sunday at 6 o'clock. So lots to look forward to over the next few weeks. And uh, it's just, uh, again, exci an exciting time of year to be able to share the gospel with so many people. Uh, so we'll start this evening. I know people are uh, still join in so uh, we'll we'll make a start this evening and again it just uh, if you well, it's a bit pointless saying this at this time but uh, there are some people who haven't got Facebook so what we'll do is once we finish the Facebook live we'll upload this straight to the church app and the YouTube channel uh, I know it takes a little while for the the video to upload to, to YouTube um, it takes about 10-15 minutes so we'll get that up onto uh, YouTube and the church app or through sermon audio as soon or as close to seven o'clock as possible. Uh, so we'll make a start this evening. Um, if we did have church tonight at Bethany, then we would have been starting a new series. We finished our 2020 vision last week. So uh, we're starting a new series this morning. We looked at the journey to the cross and we'll be looking at a few messages over the next few weeks leading up to the uh, the crucifixion and then the uh, the, the resurrection. Um, but tonight we're going to start a series looking at the epistle of James. We're going to look at the general epistles over the next few weeks. We'll do um, James, Peter and John over these next few weeks. So I wanted to start looking at James chapter 1 this evening. And um, tonight's uh, message is, is all about endurance and we looked this morning at running our race and staying in the race as it were and the the fact that we are to do away with distractions we have to get rid of conflicts and we have to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and this part of James James chapter one pretty much goes hand in hand with what we looked at this morning and um, it's all about endurance and we looked at the race this morning and we know that the Christian race is not a sprint uh, it's been referred to as a marathon. It is almost like an endurance. And we watched something, Joe and I watched something this week, uh, where you, you watch special forces training. And one of the things they do is something called the sickna. Um, they do this exercise and they never know when the exercise is going to end. And um, we watch the uh, Navy SEAL train and they do a, a similar type of thing. And they know that there is a finish line come in but they don't know exactly when it is. And they said it's all about endurance because there comes a time when 
many of these um, um, soldiers um, feel like giving up or dropping out. And we looked this morning about focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ in our race. And James, this goes hand in hand. He talks about our endurance in the race. The, the book of James has been referred to as the book of Proverbs in the New Testament and is concerned with our outward faith. Paul was concerned about an inner faith, but James, if you like, talks about our outward faith. James is calling for practical Christianity, practical Christian living. He's calling for a faith in action. And according to one commentator, there are over 50 imperatives or commands in the book of James. He doesn't suggest things, it's actually a command. And there has to be a balance in the Christian life. There is a balance between belief and behaviour. Um, probably the one verse that we could quote from James, he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, him it is sin, or um, not to be a hearer of the word, but a doer. And that's what James is emphasising. He's emphasising the balance between belief and behaviour. Not about just what we know, but how we apply what we know to our lives. What do you believe will affect your behaviour. And I think that's why we see uh, a decline in moral attitudes today, because what people believe affects their behaviour. And if there is no God, if, if there is nobody to answer to, and if there is um, you know, no judge at the end of the day, then you can basically live your life as you please. But as believers, we understand that there is a God, that there is somebody to answer to. And, and that belief in the Lord affect our behavior so our belief in God's word ought to affect our behavior the book of James was written to Christian Jews scattered across the world and these Christians had immense problems uh, being Jews they would have been rejected by the Gentiles and the fact that they were also Christians meant that they would have been rejected by their Jewish countrymen so James begins talking about the, the life of endurance in the Christian walk. He begins this book by addressing the issue of patience in suffering and testing. So let's just read the first few verses in the epistle of James and then we'll go to the Lord in prayer. James chapter 1 and verse 1 he says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven and with the wind and tossed. For let, no, for, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this night together. We thank you for the privilege we have to be able to come around your word. We thank for, Lord, for the opportunity we have to, even though our services are cancelled because of the weather, that we as a church can still gather together in this way. And Father, I just pray that you would speak to our hearts tonight. I pray that you would give us the encouragement we need uh, as we realise that the, the, the race in which we run for the Lord Jesus Christ is one that is difficult, is filled with trials and tribulations. And Father, I just pray that you would indeed help us as we suffer these trials, that our patience uh, and our faith would increase, Lord. I pray that you would use us in such a wonderful way to bring you glory, honour and praise that we as believers might point others through our through our testimony because of our lives we might point others to the Lord Jesus Christ because we behave what we believe so father I just pray that you'd bless every person that's listening here tonight father those who are listening live those who might listen to this in a little while and father if there's one who happens to to come across this uh, uh, video by accident so to speak if there's one who was uh, tuned in by mistake we realise that all things work together for good and maybe somebody has, has listened to this, uh, this word for a reason and that reason is that they need Christ as their saviour. So Father, I just pray that if there's one here tonight who has yet to trust Christ as their saviour, 
that tonight would be the night that you would speak to their hearts, convict them of their sins, help them to realize that their sins have separated them from a holy God and that they would come to a saving knowledge of Christ, believing that he died upon a cross for them and that they would put their faith and trust in him and him alone. Father, for those of us who are believers, we just ask that you would help us, Lord. We pray that as we look at these few verses in uh, the epistle of James, we just pray that you would encourage us, that you would help us, that you would equip us, Lord, and that you would make us the believers we ought to be in this day and age in which we live. So, Father, we just pray and ask these things in Christ's most wonderful name. Amen. I just want to look at uh, a few things in, in regards to James. And the first thing I want to look at is his character. Um, the way in which he opens up this um, letter explains a lot about the type of person that James was. He says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. James was indeed a child of Mary and Joseph, which would have made him a, a half-brother, as it were, of the Lord Jesus Christ. He would have been a brother of Jude, who also wrote the book of Jude, and um, he wrote this uh, epistle around about 45 AD. He became the leader uh, in the, of the church in Jerusalem and had a, a, a testimony of being an unusually, an, an unusually godly man. He was surnamed the Just by his uh, countrymen, and it is said that he spent so much time on his knees that he had the knees, uh, they became callous and hard, just like a camel's, and I've, I've read commentaries which say that his nickname was actually Camel Knees. Uh, how true that is, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but according to Josephus and Clement of Rome, uh, he was martyred in 62 to 63 AD, and he was martyred, um, it tells us, of Annas, the Jewish high priest, conspired to get rid of James during the transition time of Roman governors. Uh, Festus, who died, and the new arriving Albinus, uh, who was coming to Jerusalem. That is the period where James was martyred. Annas uh, convened a meeting with the Sadducees, tried and condemned James to death because he refused to renounce the Lord Jesus Christ. And they hated James's testimony so much that they threw him off the temple and beat him to death with clubs. Uh, Paul referred to James as a pillar in Galatians 2.9. He says, and when James... Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me. They gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. James comes from the Greek word Iacobos, which is the word for Jacob. And uh, as we said, he was the half brother of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the way in which he opened his letter was James, a servant of God, and of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that word, and there is, is an interesting one because uh, it can also be, it, it has many meanings in the Greek, but it can even mean even. Um, so he's saying the servant of God, even the Lord Jesus Christ. And he refers to himself as a servant, a doulos. That is a person who was voluntarily a slave. He was a bond slave. James was a willing bond slave, a willing servant of the Lord. And he was somebody who willingly served others. Uh, as we said, he, he was a servant of God, even the Lord Jesus Christ. And he writes to the, the Jews that are scattered all throughout the Roman Empire. And his message is more than just a greeting. He, the word Cairo, uh, where he says, James, a servant of God and to the, the, the and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. The word there, greeting, is Cairo, which means rejoice, exceedingly thrive. In their difficulties, he was exhorting them to rejoice. He was exhorting them to thrive. Uh, I think it's safe to say that there's a, uh, many believers today who struggle with rejoicing, who struggle uh, with thriving as believers. We said this morning that the Christian life can be a difficult one, um, but the Lord never promised us a bed of roses. The Lord never promised us an easy life. He said in this world, we would have tribulations, but we were to rejoice because he's overcome the world. Our joy is not in the things of the world. Our joy is not even in the situations uh, and circumstances that we find ourselves in, sometimes positive circumstances. Our joy is not in that. Our joy 
is in the Lord. And we can rejoice even when we suffer great trials and great difficulties because of whom we have placed our faith and trust in. So that was the character of James. Somebody who was, who was humble. He didn't brag about the fact that he was a, a relation to the Lord Jesus Christ. He simply said, James, a servant of God. And then not only do we see his character, we see his comfort. He said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. We are to count it all joy. And the Greek word used for count is, is important. It's a challenging word. The word is a command because joy is not natural when we face difficulties. Joy is not the natural emotion. Um, I know that there, there are many on here tonight who, who struggle with their health. I know there are many on here tonight who are going through difficult situations and circumstances. And for those who, who know us and know our family well, you know that uh, my wife has a, a terrible spinal condition. Uh, and sometimes her back goes to a point where um, she's paralysed. Uh, and it's difficult then in those situations to be joyful. To, to realise that the Lord is working in that situation, to realise that God is in control. But we are commanded to count it all joy. A closer look at what James is saying here reveal, reveals a powerful message. The word count there is a command and it's literally a hegemion and it means to be a leader, to have authority over um, to consider or to count in hebrews 13 7 and hebrews 13 17 and hebrews 13 24 that same word is translated to rule over james offers us a challenge that when difficult times come we are to be leaders in reflecting joy we are not to let circumstances overwhelm us we are to overcome those circumstances and rule, if you like, with joy, to rule over those circumstances by being joyful. Charles Spurgeon said, the trials of Christian life you shall find heavy, but you will find grace will make them light. Joy can help us to endure. Proverbs says that a merry heart doeth good like unto a medicine. When we come to difficulties in our lives and when we come to trials and when we come to difficult situations, we can either be bitter or allow the Lord to make us better. When we rejoice in our trials, one of the greatest opportunities we have is to give glory to God, to demonstrate the power of Christ in our lives. Listen, the world understands trials. The, the, the lost go through trials just like we go through trials. The world understands difficulties. They understand problems. But when they see us having a peace and a joy in difficult situations, in spite of our trials, the only answer can be that somebody has given us that strength. Somebody has given us that help, that we have something that they don't have. And that is a living saviour. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptations. What does that mean? Well, the word temptations, the word in this context doesn't refer to temptations, um, to that which is evil. It comes from a Greek word which means to trial, test or prove. The trial or testing is directed toward an end. The end or goal of the test is that that person who is tested emerges stronger, emerges more mature, emerges more pure. James is not saying that we are to rejoice when we attempted to do evil. He's referring to our trials and our testings of faith. The goal of the test is to strengthen and purify us. You think about it when um, a young bird um, is, is first hatched, there is no way that that bird can fly straight away. Why? What has to happen? The bird has to develop the, the correct muscles in its wings. The feathers have to develop. And um, after a while, the more the bird tests their wings, 
eventually they're able to soar. The trial is not designed to make us fail. The trials we go through are designed to make us soar, to help us, to strengthen our wings as it were. When a Christian uses his ability to rejoice in a trial, then we are maturing. We are learning to endure. We don't like the trial. Nobody likes, nobody in their right mind would say, do you know what, I really love a good trial. Well, of course we don't. Nobody likes a trial. But even in the trials we face, it is possible to rejoice. Hebrews 12, 2, and this is one of the verses that we use this morning, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. What? For the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Was there joy in the cross? Of course there wasn't. There was pain, anguish, suffering, rejection, hurt, hatred. There was no joy in the cross. But it was the result of the cross that brought the Lord great joy. Because Christ died on the cross, he opened the way for man to have a relationship with God. That relationship that was um, had suffered because of sin. He, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We're not exempt from trials. Trials will come our way. Because that's why James says, my brethren, count it all joy if you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy in case you fall. No, when? When you fall in diverse temptations. That when is in a subjective, a subjunctive mood in the Greek and carries the idea of not just the possibility of a trial, but the inevitability of a trial. Trials are going to come. Christ said, these things I have spoken unto you that you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have um, overcome the world. And Paul said to Timothy, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. The word diverse, uh, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. That word uh, diverse um, talks about the fact that it's trials come in a variety of forms. Trials have a way of coming in many different ways, shapes and degrees. The word for fall, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, carries the idea of being surrounded on every side without any way of escape. When we are surrounded by trials, when we are surrounded by tests, and as we said, those tests will come in a whole host of, of forms, whether it be um, a health issue, whether it be a financial problem, whether it be a, a family issue, uh, whatever it may be, those um, trials come in many different ways. And sometimes we feel like we are surrounded on every single side. But we can learn to rejoice in those trials, even when surrounded. When you think of Nehemiah, as Nehemiah is building those walls and Sanballat and Tobiah are, are calling him to come down off the wall and, are, uh, you know, are mocking him for the, the work that he's undertaken and uh, are constantly trying to, uh, you know, to discourage him. What does Nehemiah say? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Nehemiah was under great pressure to, to get this job done. Nehemiah faced infighting among his own people. Nehemiah faced problems from outside of the walls, problems from um, the, you know, the religious quarters. Nehemiah faced problems from all over the place, but he said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Sometimes we feel like we are absolutely hemmed in. It doesn't matter which way we turn, we feel like we just walk in into a, a, a trial or a difficulty because we are surrounded. But Paul said this, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Here's the thing. Depending on how we deal with the trial will depend upon what people will think 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because how we deal with what we're going through will reflect what is coming out. So what's on the inside inevitably comes out. So if the Lord is on the inside, when we come to a trial, the Lord is going to come out. We see that even though we face difficult situations, it is possible to even have joy in the most difficult of trials. And the amount of times I've heard people who are, you know, are facing life-threatening illnesses, who have faced uh, uh, terrible accidents, who have gone through such heartache and such pain, and I've heard people say the same thing over and over and over again. The Lord has got me through. The Lord has got me through. My faith has got me through. The Lord has helped me. God has given me the strength. And that was James's comfort. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. And then we see his conflict, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. God wants us to understand some things about our conflicts. The word know means to learn by experience. It carries the idea of something that is beyond the factual and becomes a personal experience. And we learn, don't we? we? We say that often. We, oh, we learn from experience. You know, you, you make a mistake and um, you say, well, look, as long as I don't make that mistake again. And, and that's sometimes the greatest lessons in our lives come from the mistakes we've made. Uh, because we learn from different trials. We learn from different experiences in our lives. James says, knowing this, he said, I want you to get this. I want you to understand knowing this. That the trying of your faith worketh patience. What is James talking about when he says the trying of our faith? Well, that word trying comes from the Greek word dokimono, which means to test something for the purpose of approving it. It was a word used for testing a coin to make sure that the metal in the coin was um, genuine, that it wasn't made up of different alloys. And it was a test that the coin went through to make sure it was the real deal. And if you like, the aim of our testing is to purge some things that ought not to be in our lives. The aim of our testing is to purge us of impurities, to establish that genuine faith, to, to, if you like, to prove our faith. You don't know something is the real deal until it is proved. You don't know that our faith is real until it is proved. Uh, and I, I know I've said this in church before, but Pastor Ed always used to say, you, you don't know your boat will float till you actually push it out into the water. And what he was saying is, is you don't know that you've, you've got that faith until you actually Take that step. It's important that we understand that these trials are for the purpose of helping us, uh, of purifying us, of helping us to grow, of proving our faith to produce patience. I think we would all agree that the one thing that we need more than anything in our Christian lives is patience. I made a vow um, very early on in my ministry, never ever again to preach on patience or to pray for patience. Because I can promise you this, if you, if you pray for patience, the Lord doesn't just give you patience. He puts people in your, your life and people in your way that will encourage you to learn patience. Or he will put you in situations and circumstances that will give you the opportunity to become more patient. The word patience again, uh, means not only to remain, endure, or to bear things in your life, but to turn trials into greatness. Uh, when we patiently endure trials while trusting the Lord, then we grow in that area of endurance. When we patiently endure our trials, we grow uh, in, in, in trusting the Lord. We need patience as long as we are in the fire uh, of that trial. When our trial is complete, then patience no longer has a purpose. Endurance then is what kicks in, that inequality of strength that is permanent. And that trait grows and develops each time a trial is trustingly and patiently endured. So what happens? We go through a trial, we learn patience, and our 
if you like, our stamina, our endurance increases. And then we go through another trial and we endure, patiently endure, and our faith increases and our endurance increases and our stamina increases. And then we go through another trial. And that is the continual growing process of the Christian. It's the same thing as when a child or a baby learns to walk. Those first few steps that a baby takes, they're all over the place. They're tottering about and they're falling over and they need support and they need help. And then they start to put one foot in front of the other and they start to walk. Well, as those muscles develop and as those muscles go through a a tearing process and as those muscles are torn, they they then grow and then uh, it's a, a continuous process. That child then learns to walk, that child learns to run. And it's the same with the believer. We go through these trials because it, they help us to improve our muscles, as it were. They help us to grow as believers. Um, when our trial is complete, we are then able to, to show that a lost and dying world what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us, in us and through us. Uh, Colonel George Washington Gothals, the man who was responsible for the completion of the Panama Canal, had uh, big problems. He had problems with the climate. He had problems with geography. But his biggest problem were the people back home who kept telling him that he would never finish the project. Finally, a colleague asked him, aren't you going to answer these critics? In time, answered Gothals, when his partner asked, when the canal is finished. When the canal is finished, in spite of the opposition that he faced, he would then prove a point when the task was complete. In spite of the opposition that we faced in this world, we had to finish what God has started. The proof, as it were, is in the pudding. And, um, you know, when we go through trials and when we are tested, then we prove whether or not God is real in our lives. If we suddenly decide that no, Christianity is not for me and we turn our back on the Lord and turn away from church and, you know, and head off and then the proof is in the pudding. Did we endure that trial because God was in us and helping us or was God never in us in the first place and therefore there was no endurance necessary? Remember that James is pleading for a belief that behaves and a faith that is followed by fruit. Um, James says we have to rejoice not because the trials come, but because of the benefits that they have in our growth as believers. And then finally, in verse four, we see his consolation. He says, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. The word perfect there is from the Greek word teleos, and it means to be fit for the task that you were sent to do. Um, for example, a, a sacrificial animal that was simply um, bred for uh, sacrifice was called teleos. It was fit for the task that it was sent into the world for. A scholar was uh, teleos if he was mature. A person was considered teleos if he was full grown. The word described an end or completeness of a process or thing. So when he's saying, but let patience have a perfect work, that is the work of patience is to mature us as believers, to mature us as believers. And think about it. There are certain things that you would not allow your children to do. Um, now, when our children are of a certain age, we don't give them the car keys. Um, they've got to wait until they're old enough and then they've got to, you know, they've got to get their provisional license and then they've got to learn to drive and then they've got to pass their test. And then maybe then we'll trust them with our car keys. Um, but the point is this. We don't give a young child something that can only be entrusted to uh, an older person. And one of the reasons why uh, we have this work of patience, but let patience have a perfect work, is so that we can mature as believers, that we can grow as believers. So the, the work of patience is to mature us as Christians and it is to complete us, if you like. Uh, let patience have a, a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire. And that word entire comes from the Greek word holokaleros, which means whole 
or entire in every part. And it is from the, the, the word that we get hologram from, which is a 360 degree, three dimensional picture of an object. Uh, and again, what we are saying here is that we are entire, we are complete. Um, God wants us to mature and fully develop in our faith and our spiritual growth, which will then help us endure the struggles of everyday life. And then he says that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And the word wanting simply means lacking, left behind or destitute. And this word was used of a defeat of an army, uh, of giving up in a struggle, of failure to reach a standard that should have been reached. God uses patience to help us be fully equipped, not lacking in anything. He wants us to be victorious Christians, fully equipped for his service. We're not to give up. We're not to just throw in the towel at the very first trial that comes our way. We are to count it all joy. When we fall into a whole host of various trials, when we feel like we're surrounded. And that's not the natural thing to do and that's not the easy thing to do. But we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. We can count it joy in our trials. And it's not natural but that counting it joy in those trials. We know that the trying of our faith will work patience. And that patience will have that perfect work. That it will help us to come to maturity. That it will help us to be complete entire. That it will help us in terms of satisfaction in wanting nothing. Do we have that victory in our lives as believers? In 1972... NASA launched the, Expl the Exploratory Space Probe Pioneer 10. And according to Leon Jaroff in time, the satellite's primary mission was to reach Jupiter, photograph the planet and its moons, beam data to Earth about Jupiter's magnetic field, radiation belts and atmosphere. And scientists regarded this as a bold plan. For at that time, no Earth satellite had ever gone beyond Mars. And they feared the asteroid belt would destroy the satellite before it could reach its target. But Pioneer 10 accomplished its mission and much more. Swinging past the giant planet in November 1973, that's a very good month, November 1973, uh, Jupiter's immense gravity hurled Pioneer 10 at a higher rate of speed towards the edge of the solar system. At one billion miles from the sun, Pioneer 10 passed Saturn. At some two billion miles, it hur hurled past Uranus. Neptune at nearly three billion miles. Pluto at almost four billion miles. And by 1997, 25 years after its launch, Pioneer 10 was more than six billion miles from the sun. Despite the immense distance, Pioneer 10 continued to beam back radio signals to scientists on Earth. Perhaps the most remarkable, writes Jaroff, those signals emanate from an 8 watt transmitter which radiates about as much power as a bedroom nightlight and takes more than nine hours to reach Earth. The little satellite that was not qualified to do what it did. Engineers designed Pioneer 10 with a useful life of just three years, but it kept going and going and going. By simple longevity, its tiny 8-watt transmitter radio accomplished more than anyone thought possible. And so it is when we offer ourselves to serve the Lord. God can work even through someone with 8-watt abilities. God cannot work, however, through someone who quits, through someone who gives up, through someone who throws in the towel. Serving the Lord. Counting it all joy when we go through trials and letting patience have its perfect work in our lives are elements of endurance. God help us to be steadfast. God help us to be unmovable. God help us to always abound in the work of the Lord. And I pray that God would help us be enduring Christians. I don't know what it is that you are facing right now. The Lord knows. The Lord knows exactly what it is that you are going through. And I wonder maybe if you would joy as being affected by the trial that you were facing. James tells us to count it all joy. Now that doesn't mean that you are happy in the situation that you find yourself in. It simply means that God can and will help us in that situation. 
teach us in that situation. Help us to mature. Help us to grow. Help us to feel his presence. Help our faith to increase because of what it is that we face. Maybe there's something that you need from the Lord tonight and you need help in the situation that you find yourself in right now. And I pray that the Lord will speak to your heart. I pray that the Lord will enable you to have that joy. Because as Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I think sometimes we feel weak as believers because the devil has done such a good job of stealing our joy. And our joy is gone. But if we can get our joy back, we'll get our strength back. And if we can get our strength back, we'll be able to give far more glory to the Lord because he's the one that's getting us through these trials rather than our own determination, rather than our own um, self-worth, rather than our own grit, as it were. It's all about him. And we can count it joy because of the strength that the Lord gives us, even in the most adverse of conditions and situations that we find ourselves in. I pray that the Lord will bless these few thoughts and will speak to your hearts this evening. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you again for this night together. Father, I'm so thankful for those who have gathered together tonight. And even though we couldn't have church in Bethany, in our building tonight, Lord, that we could gather together in this way. Uh, and Father, I just pray that you would speak to our hearts tonight. I pray that you would encourage us. We recognise the fact that trials do and will come our way. It's not a case of if we go through difficult situations. It's a case of when we face those difficulties. But Father, I pray that as we face those difficulties, you would give us the strength we need. You would give us the joy we need. And as we go through those trials, that our patience and our faith increases. And as a result of that, Lord, uh, we are mature as believers. We become complete as believers we become steadfast as believers and as a result of our steadfastness and our joy and our endurance through those trials you and you alone receive the glory and people will see something of the Lord Jesus Christ in and through our lives father we just want to give you all the glory and the honor and the praise tonight we just want to say that we love you and we praise you and again if there's one here tonight who has yet to trust Christ as their saviour and Father, I pray that something that is said here tonight would speak to their hearts and the Holy Spirit would convict them, Lord, and would help them to see their need of a saviour and that they would look to the cross of Calvary, see the great love that God had for them, believe that Jesus died for them and that his blood and his blood alone can cleanse them of their sin. And they would simply call upon that most wonderful of name, re names, repenting of their sins and putting their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, we just pray and ask these things now. Would you be with your children tonight, we pray. Would your hand be upon each and every one that is, that is gathered around your word at this moment. We pray and ask these things in Christ's most perfect, precious and wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Well, again, it is a, it's been a joy uh, to be with you uh, this, this, this evening and this morning. Uh, we will be uploading um, the, the video onto uh, our um, YouTube channel and the, uh, the church app as well. And again, thank you so much for all those who've, who've uh, been on tonight. Thank you for your comments and uh, um, again for the, the, the participation in, in tonight's and this morning's message. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you, uh, for those who are in Bethany, we'll see you in church on Wednesday night. And uh, maybe if the opportunity arises, then uh, we'll be able to, to do a, a Facebook live video again in, in the not too distant future. So thanks again for watching. God bless and we'll see you soon.